Today, I'm gonna to show you how to take this really boring, familiar sort of landing page and modernize the heck out of it. So we've all seen those designs. It's a, a typical photograph-based background. Uh, it has some text in the middle that's centered along with a call to action. Yawn, yawn, yawn. We've seen it since like the 2010s. I'm gonna show you how to make this better, but also, uh, another approach to using photographs and using them in such a way that makes it, it brings it into this decade, essentially, the 2020s. I still see a lot of people doing this. They also do it wrong. I'll give you some tips for that. And yeah, if you enjoy it, make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and let's get started. Now, before we begin, some of you may not know, but early in the year, I released a UI design bootcamp on Scrimba. Now, Scrimba.com is one of the hottest new ways to learn coding as well as design. At Scrimba, you don't just watch videos. No, 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 you're actually able to modify code in the browser while you learn. My course on UI design features over 100 lessons that are specifically tailored to help you become an awesome UI designer, and they're packed with interactive challenges. So visit the very first line in the description of this YouTube video to access my course along with many others for a very low monthly fee. All right, so let's say for example, you have uh, a website like this with a hero section, you have a watermark sort of you know heavy photograph background. I see this all the time. People put text on top and there's just not enough contrast because the background itself has too much brightness uh, and it contrasts too much with the foreground element. So the first improvement we could make if you're gonna go this route is, let's go ahead and duplicate this. Just take this background or this image and drop it down like right around there. That way you can completely see the text that's sitting on top of it. Now, I would say one other improvement to, to make this particular example stick out would be to take this element right here and maybe give it a primary color to make it really stand out. And now we've gone from you know this option right here from this and ops, you know, th this is just, it's bad. I can understand wanting to, to present people with a nice full photograph that's not washed out, but if you're gonna have text sitting on top of it, you need that contrast, all right? So this would be the best bet if you wanna go that route of having a, photo, a full photograph as the background. But we're gonna step it up a notch here, and we're gonna step more into modern design. This is more, you know, this has been established, it's been around for a good 10 years or so. Uh, we're gonna make an improvement on this. So we're gonna use a photograph that's entirely different than this one right here. Originally, this is what this photograph looks like. It's a nice photograph, right? But it just doesn't work well for a hero section. And it's also kind of dated in the context that we're using here. So the type of photograph that I like to use for this, you know, this sort of thing, I'm gonna go to unsplash.com, like my favorite photograph site, uh, they're all free. And I'm gonna type in pizza. All right. So we have a lot of options that we can choose from. They're all pretty, pr quite professional. And the type of photograph I'm looking for is something that has uh, a background that's seamless or something that we can just kind of quickly integrate into the design and make it look like it's a integral part of the design. Like it's a, it's, it's, it's a natural, it's naturally there no matter where you look at. Let me just demonstrate what I'm talking about. It's kind of hard to explain. I uh, Take for instance, this picture. This picture has this real simple background uh, and you see people's hands reaching in. It's, it's a great photograph of yummy looking pizza, for instance. Now, a side note, if you're dealing with a real client and they, like they own a pizza shop or something, you should have a professional photographer take a picture like this and you shouldn't be using other people's pizza, obviously. You wouldn't wanna do that, but I'm just trying to give you an example. Uh, this, this is a nice photograph that could work in the context that I wanna use. Um, and I'll show you in a second, this one as well, like this one could be situated off to the right side of the browser and the rest of the background would be like this color of the site. So it would look seamless. It would fit in very nicely. And you may be able to find other examples of this. Sometimes it requires going into Photoshop and doing a little bit of uh, editing. Like here's one, this could, this could work as well in another context for a landing page. So let's go ahead and we're gonna take this one. All right, so we're gonna download this. And I'm gonna show this in the folder and that's showing up on my other monitor. Um, what I'm gonna do is first hop into Photoshop and we're gonna open up that photograph. 
and I want to remove the background. You don't always have to remove the background, but I can tell that there's enough variation in this background. Like this is a gray and this is kind of like a light, kind of like desaturated, you know, like a skin color almost. So what we can do is we could take, uh, let's see, our magic eraser tool and just start getting rid of parts of this image. Now, if this is a real project, I would do a much better job of cutting things out. Uh, but this this should suffice for now. I get that out of there. Yeah, so this is pretty much, I, I'm sure there's some other artifacts that are there, but I'm happy with this. Let's go to image. We're gonna go to image size. We don't need a 4,800, you know, image here. We'll just do like 1,600 pixels. Uh, and I'm gonna save this as a um, transparent PNG. Now notice the file size. There, there are tools you can run this through that would really um, take it down quite a notch. I'm just gonna call this pizza. All right, and we're gonna go back. All right, so some situation works. We're gonna resituate things over here. Let's group that up. Let's group this up. We'll take both of these. We're gonna put them over here just for now. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take pizza and replace that one. Oops, that's the wrong one. There we go. We're going to replace that right there. Okay, so we have some work to do. Let's increase this first of all. And we're also going to uh, scale it down a bit. Actually, let me adjust this. We're also gonna take, uh, let's take this, let's give ourselves just like a, um, kind of like a skin tone color right here. And what I will also do is take this temporary background. We'll make everything black. We want this to be situated like up around here. And again, you can, um, in Adobe XD, you can double click into this and we can move things around as well. Something right there. Now we have to make some other adjustments. So we'll take this. Actually, what I'll do is I, the world's best pizza. I want to drag that out just so we can have better control over the type here. All right, the world's best pizza. And then whatever this says, let's delete that. We'll come over here, paste that in visual hierarchy. So we're gonna take this down a few notches, make this go regular or something like that. Put this here, our call to actions. We can barely see this one cause it's white. We're just about done with the setup work. Um, double click in here. We'll make this like black. And then maybe we'll make this part white. Oops. There we go. We'll make this. There we go. And then maybe I will adjust this a little bit uh, darker. So, yeah, like right around there. And so now we have an inch. It's not cut out perfectly. We have some artifacts here. Of course, you would, you would fix that. And now we have sort of a, an interesting sort of image here that is seamless with the website. And I think it works quite well. Um, it's just the fact that it's, I'm moving things around, sorry. Um, the fact that it's not like a full, you know, typical, uh, you know, photograph based watermark background and that it just kind of fits in here, I think is a million times better in my opinion and, and a lot more modern. And of course you could do other stuff too. Like for instance, uh, we can work in more interesting elements. Uh, these things are popular. They've been popular for a while now. Doing those little circles, like we take the background color and we just go down slightly or we can go a little darker. Actually, let's go black. Let's do that. You can do that. So we'll re repeat the grid. <clears throat> You know, people are doing interesting things like this, just kind of like a graphic design. Uh, I would personally maybe add some other elements, maybe like uh, maybe like a custom design illustrated pizza type thing, if that makes sense. 
So we'll take this border slightly, kind of want it like a watermark right around there. And then we can drop this down like that. Now I would personally make this like into a sliced pizza or something, something very simple like line art. I uh, And now we have a really, you know, a pretty, a much more unique design than what we simply had in the original one right here. I wanna show you yet another quick example uh, using that other photograph, just to show you, you know, more more looks at this, this situation. So we could download this one. Uh, let's show in folder. This one, I'm not gonna bother cutting out the photograph, um, but I will do, what I will do is, um, yeah, let's duplicate that. We will, drag this in here. And of course, we're gonna to have to make some big adjustments. Kind of like that. Actually, we can make this bigger like this, maybe have it kind of cut off right there. And then I know this looks like junk right now and that's okay. Take this background. So notice how I mentioned it's seamless in this context. I uh, Let's make this stuff white real quickly. Um, we'll take our background again and we'll make uh, the fill, all that stuff white. Maybe we'll move this stuff over to be in line with this column, move this over here, just to kind of make it even. We'll take this little element, this ellipse right here, make it grayscale. And then we'll take this element over here. We'll make it white. So I'm just showing you different things and different ways to uh, make stuff look a little bit more interesting. Um, we could also notice like in this case, there's a lot of white space in the middle. So what we could do is drag this out. We'll drag this out. Take these, put them together, but then take all this stuff and align it to the middle now. Now we don't have a ton of different, uh, a ton of white space here in the middle between the pizza and that part. So now, you know, these two options are a lot better than what we have over here. So in fact, let's let's actually just take this, these three, because I th this one, these ones aren't fair. They're not that polished. This is just kind of like the old school style, which it still works. Uh, let's take the prototype. We'll go from there, and then we'll also go from this prototype to here, and then back around. So now, if I click play, you know this is this is kind of the old school style. Uh, it still works. There's no usability issues with it. It's simple, but I would say the more modern approach to integrating photographs would be something more like this, or something like this. Uh, they still get their points across with good photography, but it's just a little bit more, like I said, a modern take on using photographs in design. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned something new about integrating photography in your UI, UX designs. And as always, make sure to subscribe. Check out designcourse.com. Put your, your email in order to be notified, and I'll see you real soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.